Welcome, uh, everyone, to another webinar uh, with Will's Cooperative Purchasing. Uh, my name is Jeff Bruner, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I'm excited today to be um, joined by uh, Brittany Haynes, coming to us from IGI Global. Uh, one of the perennial things that we hear from our academic library members is that they're interested in more options for our ebooks. And so that's one of the things we're going to, that is the main thing that Brittany's going to be talking to us about today, uh, a new kind of shared collection option. But uh, without any further ado, I want to turn things over to Brittany so she has ample time to uh, talk about the program that, that they're going to be bringing to us. And then we'll have, we should have time for questions at the end. Um, with that, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and welcome Brittany. Thanks, Jeff. Let me go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> so we're here today to talk about the ebook title sharing program with IGI Global. Jeff and I have been working on together. We're excited to bring this to Will's member institutions. We've done a similar program with domestic and international consortia across the board. And I know a lot of you are already pretty familiar with IGI Global. Um, one thing that my team does, um, I'm our director of eCollections, and one thing that my team does is take a look through um, the profiles of institutions, looking at library catalogs and discovery services when we're looking to work with them more directly and collaboratively to identify what are your current IGI Global holdings, whether it's directly on our platform or through another platform or something like that. Um, and from that analysis, I do see we have quite a bit of institutions, uh, especially among the academic libraries within Wales that are working with us by acquiring our individual titles. So I'm hoping that bringing this opportunity to the group, which we have seen successes with, um, can enable everyone to work together collaboratively on their single title acquisitions and get a much better overall value when you're acquiring IGI Global titles um, this fall through this title share. So one thing I did just want to briefly touch base about is for those of you who may not be as familiar with us or just need a refresher, um, IJ Global, we've been around for a little over 30 years now. Uh, we're an academic and scientific publisher, and I'll go over our subject areas here in a few minutes. Um, but what makes us different is we do make sure that we're always producing research over um, profit. So for us, that means working with international researchers worldwide. Nearly 40% of our researchers are from non-Western countries, which I think is important for some of the dialogue that I've been receiving about acquiring our content recently, um, making sure that we really do have diverse perspectives that are reflected in the double-blind peer-reviewed research that we are producing. So for us, we're very focused on the research community. We've also got a lot going on with open access, which we can always talk about another time, but um, we also have a quality-centric publishing process. So for us, being a member of the International Committee on Publication Ethics, COPE, um, is definitely something that we pride ourselves on. And then also having a quick turnaround time. Our book publications, which the ebook title sharing program would enable you to acquire, um, are turned around in about a seven to eight month publishing period, which is as frequent as some of our semi-annual journals which makes a lot of sense because we wanna make sure that our book publications are producing the most timely and innovative research in that particular field, just as much as serials do, right? So it's important to keep that in mind. And then of course our product offerings, um, we're happy to always be collaborative, flexible, maybe do a little bit more innovative things um, like the title sharing programs, making sure we can do something a little bit different. Um, being a medium-sized publisher, we can kind of play around with some of those cool ideas and make sure we're collaborating really directly on what institutions or consortia really want. So with that, the products we do offer, we have reference books, which is most relevant to this title share, scholarly journals, and then our e-collections that go down to a, from a comprehensive to a disciplined subject, and then even topic focused um, availability on those collections. And our publications overall are highly indexed across Web of Science, Scopus, um, ERIC, PsycInfo, and other major indices. For the title share, it's just important to do a brief overview of which subjects you can actually acquire our content in. We do cover 11 different subject areas. And one thing to keep in mind is they're all cross-disciplinary. Um, all of our titles have at least two subject areas, a primary and a secondary, if not even a tertiary. Um, so a lot of cross-disciplinary 
content across multiple fields. Um, for example, you know, a lot of medical titles will often have socioeconomic aspects that go along with them. And so they fall both within the social sciences and medicine and healthcare. Um, our business and management titles, some of them might overlap quite a bit with computer science and IT, especially when looking at um, increasing productivity and efficiency within workplaces, that sort of thing. So it's just keeping in mind these 11 subject areas, fastest growing are probably business and management, computer science and IT, and education, as well as social sciences, a lot of our DEI content. But as I mentioned, not only are we producing content on DEI specific topics, but our researchers themselves and all of our titles really fall within that scope because of making sure that we work with individuals and experts across the board. So as a brief overview, I'm just gonna go through these slides, um, not go down through them all intensively. I can share this file with Jeff and it can be passed around to anyone who's interested in taking a deeper look, but just wanted to give you a view of across these 11 subject areas that we have books in that are available through the title share. Um, who are we getting this research from? So this kind of breaks it down, not only the number of titles we have within the subject area um, of our 7,300 total titles that we'll have by the end of the 2023 copyright year, um, but where are they coming from? So business, we're getting research from CEOs, leading instructors, consultants, those individuals. And you can take a look down through this presentation when we pass it over um, for your subject area of interest, or if there's multiple, to see how many titles we have available throughout them and where the research is coming from. I'm just gonna flip through here for everyone. So you can take a brief look at some of the major titles as well that we have featured on these slides. Some of these are our top selling titles or the ones that we've gotten the most requests for that are perhaps being utilized in courses or have won awards. So you can always visit us at our website or you can contact me directly. My email is up on the screen and it'll also be up on the flyer that I'm about to share specifically for the title share. Um, but I can be reached at bhaines at igi-global.com or you can give me a call 717-533-8845 extension 132. Obviously any questions can come through Jeff as well if you're working with him directly. Um, through this title share, or you can reach out to me and I'll just make sure Jeff is aware of who I'm talking to about the title share. And if you have had any questions that might be relevant for the whole group. So now I'm pulling up, Jeff, can you see the flyer okay? Yes, looks good. Perfect. So this is the flyer that you may have already received from Jeff um, that goes over the title share agreement that we're looking at this fall. So essentially how the title share works is it does enable institutions to acquire individual or multiple ebook titles. Um, and then it's shared ownership across the board. It is perpetual ownership of these titles. And what we do to enable shared ownership across the group for those who do wanna participate is as long as you're buying, picking up some titles for the group um, at um, the multiplier price that we have listed for the books, everyone gets to share access to those titles. So. This is really ideal for varying institution sizes, institution budgets. Um, we understand that throughout the pandemic as well, some budgets have been hit hard or you might be trying to plan a little bit better. It can, you might not necessarily be able to stretch it as far as you had been. Um, for others, they haven't had the same problem. I know often it can rely on enrollment numbers as well. Um, so based on some of these conversations, we do try and keep the pricing at a lower multiplier. You'll see here, for every ebook you purchase as part of this title share, you're paying 2.5 the ebook list price. Um, but then that'll enable access and perpetual ownership, not only for your institution, but all of the other institutions that decide to participate. So with this, we are offering a free trial period um, where you can check out our ebook collection. As I mentioned, we currently have about 6,600 titles in it. It'll be growing to 7,300 titles by the end of the 2023 copyright year. And so to run this tile share through the fall, we wanted to make sure everyone has that option to do a free trial, check out the content, maybe see how your patrons interact with it. If you wanna integrate it into your discovery service from September 1st through October 31st. So a two month trial period, um, again, that's optional. I understand that's not going to work for everyone. Um, so if you prefer not to do a trial, what we can do either way is provide items like turnaway reports if we have any on file for you 
for titles, um, your faculty-led contributions and publications that they've been contributing to. Um, we can also provide title listings in areas of interest for you in particular. If you're looking to fill gaps, especially, this is a great time to reach out to me and be like, hey, do you have anything on artificial intelligence or diversity and equity in schools or whatever topic you may be looking for, even if it goes beyond the broadened overall subject scope. We're happy to put together, I can work directly with our editorial team to put together a listing for titles that make sense for you. So after the trial period, we'll make sure to share usage with those that do decide to do the trial. Um, we can provide counter five reports. We also have counter four. We can also set up librarians with their own free library and administration accounts. So you can always be checking your IGI Global holdings on our platform, your usage, even outside of the title share, right? And, and we can just really work with you one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm more than happy to schedule a time aside from this webinar to touch base with you or your subject deciding librarians and um, discuss the title listing, the webinar, any of your specific needs that you have for this title share. So after we share the usage and everyone has their title list and they've reviewed the content and they've decided if they would like to participate by purchasing at least one ebook as part of the title share, we will go ahead and pass around that list, make sure everyone confirms the titles that they would like to purchase on behalf of the group. And I can show you that list here. We are continuously um, announcing new content each week. So this list does grow um, as we announce 2023 copyright titles, for example. And forthcoming titles, as long as they've been announced, are also included within this. So if you would like to purchase a forthcoming title on behalf of the group, that is welcome. I can always update this list as we get nearer to the selection period. But you can see here, you just put your name next to the titles that you would like to acquire. And we do have the 2.5 um, multiplier price for the group share listed in column C here. So you can know exactly from the get-go how much you would be spending on the titles you're interested in. So we will want to make sure we're collaborating to finalize everyone's um, selections by November 14th, ideally. And then Will's Consortia will actually be invoicing the institutions um, directly. From there, group perpetual access to all the titles that are acquired will be set up for all the institutions by the end of November 2022 is our goal. So another part of the title share that we've enabled that we don't typically provide with single title acquisitions is um, a acquire an open initiative where essentially any library that invests $5,000 or more in this agreement can qualify for OA support. Um, one thing to keep in mind is there's a lot going on with the open access movement. Um, I know a lot of institutions are starting to dabble in the open access movement more so than others. It really depends on where your library is at and how you're interacting with it. Um, so a nice thing about this is you're purchasing the content, but you can actually benefit at no additional cost from converting some of your previously published works, articles, and chapters from corresponding authors from your institution to open access based on your investment level here. Um, we do also offer open access agreements and transformative options that perhaps this gives you the opportunity to kind of see how your institution interacts with this sort of initiative. So what I can do with this, as well as pull down a historical listing of publishing history with your faculty, take a look and see where we have opportunities to convert some of these articles and chapters from your faculty to open access. Um, based on your investment level. Um, and again, this is optional. So even if you're investing more than $5,000, um, you can decide to opt into this or not. And then if you're investing less than $5,000, that's the beauty of this title share is you don't necessarily have to hit that level. You can just be purchasing one title as well to participate in it from the title ownership. A couple of benefits to keep in mind is that we offer on our platform no DRM, nothing like that, unlimited simultaneous users with um, at no additional charge. All the titles will be with perpetual access and you have PDF and HTML download options for your faculty, I know with accessibility, that's often a question we get. We offer counter reports four and five, as I mentioned earlier, and free mark records, no hosting, archiving, or maintenance fees, no embargo of content, and we're always trying to update our accessibility standards and compliance features and innovate them as well. We do have a page where you can download um, our current VPAT. And 
the biggest thing to keep in mind is if you're noticing something for one of your users or one of your librarians, whether it be a researcher, anyone at your institution is facing some type of difficulty with accessing content, um, whether that be from a disability or any other item, um, you can just make sure to reach out to us and our information technology team does take those inquiries seriously and we'll try to come up with a solution in a timely manner. So biggest thing is just communication, reaching out to us if there's ever a question or an issue. So this offering is available only directly through IGI Global on our platform. You can reach out to Jeff or myself about this. And just make sure to take a look at this flyer because we did point out some of the Wills member contributions that are in some of our titles. It, this is really an ideal time to pick up some of your faculty-led or faculty-contributed titles because not only will your institution then garner access to it, but you'll be increasing the discoverability and accessibility of your faculty's titles because it will be available through any other institution that participates as well. And again, here are the 11 subject areas that we cover with these books. Those are the main things I just wanted to make sure to cover. As mentioned, when we come around to the trial period and the selection period, this sheet will be passed around. We make sure to dedupe. So when we're getting these selections, Jeff and I, well, I'll be making sure that no one's picking the same title. If that does arise, I'll just make sure to reach out to those institutions that have marked the same title and you all can decide how you would like to go about acquiring it if one institution would like to go ahead and purchase it for the group. And we can always um, provide replacement or similar publication ideas as well if you are looking to utilize your budget for this. So that's really the main gist of the title share. I know there may be questions, so I definitely want to make sure to leave plenty of time for that. Um, but we can go ahead and kind of open it up. I don't know if any have been coming through the yeah. Q&A or chat specifically. Brittany, we do have one question that's come in so far from Rachel, uh, who is at Gateway Technical College. Um, she says, so we only need to purchase one title to be part of the group. Is that per year? Uh, and and I'll let you answer that. I know the answer, but I'll let you answer that. So go ahead. Sure. Yeah. So the title shares do run on a title share basis. So um, this year, I mean, we've had cases where there's been requests to do it more than once a year. Um, but certainly, um, currently what we have set up with Wills, this is the first time we're doing it. So if you participate in this particular round of a title share um, by purchasing at least one ebook at the multiplier price, then yes, you then garner perpetual ownership of any of the other titles selected during this um, title share period, if that makes sense. Yeah, so this isn't this isn't really a subscription. This is like a one-time perpetual access purchase that everybody who buys anything gets everything. <laughs> and then sure, yep. as if long it's as successful, it's within... maybe we will do it again in the future, right? Exactly. So it's definitely, we're more than open to that. It's just making sure that I just want to make sure everyone understands. So like if we were to do it now and then again next year, they would be two separate title shares. Right. Yes. So you, you know, if you, if you don't buy in this year and we do another one next year, those are different collections, right? So you, you, it's not like, you know, you would, you would have a chance to get in on the titles that were purchased this year by jump, jumping in next year. It's a little bit different some, than some of the other ebook shared collection options that we have here, which are sort of continuous members coming in and out. This is sort of like a, everybody going in together on one big purchase. And then, like I said, uh, I'm jumping, I, I guess I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but I'm hoping that uh, that it goes really well and there's demand to do another one uh, at, at some future time too. Yeah, sure, certainly. We've seen that appetite with some of the other consortia that we've worked with on this and we're always more than happy to, um, Go back at it essentially if the demand is there and if that makes it easy for the consortia to kind of collaborate and grow their IGI global collection, certainly. Um, so, yes, it is just the minimum of one ebook. Um, and if you're participating this fall in that September through November timeframe that we have set up with Jeff, um, you would benefit from this. Um, we have another question from. Katie, who is at another one of our technical college campuses, uh, she asks, what does your ebook platform look like on the user end? Sure, on the user end, so I can kind of, I could just pull it up and show you as far as like searching capability and everything like that. That's easy enough for me to just go ahead and pull up right here. Just give me one moment. Okay. 
Also, hopefully nobody can hear. I have a I have a dog in this room with me snoring in the background. So hopefully that's not uh, too disruptive. <laughs> no, I was going to say I didn't hear anything. <laughs> so I think you're in the clear. I know they come up with some new technology. I don't know if you guys have seen some of the commercials, but um, there's things now that can deafen out background noise during calls like this and Teams mm. and Zoom and all that good stuff. I'm sure lots of people are thankful for that now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen again. So this is the IGI Global Infosite platform. So working directly with us on a title share like this, and, and many of you already own titles directly on our platform. Um, but this is what it's set up. You come in, um, you'll see an interface for what you own. Obviously, this looks a little different for me right now because I am under... IGI Global's IPs and logged in as myself. Um, but we can set up access through IP ranges. That's the most secure way to go about it. If you provide that to us, if we don't already have them on file, or if we don't have the most up-to-date ones on file, um, we can set that up. So anyone on your IP range will be able to access anything you have access to or your institution has access to on the platform. We can also look at things like referral URLs if needed. Um, Username and password is also an option as well, though that's not nearly as secure. I know our information technology team would not necessarily recommend that for you, but that is an option. So we do have multiple ways of accessing. We can input proxy IP ranges. I know that's obviously increased quite a bit, the number of institutions that have proxy ranges. Um, we're integrated with Open Athens, Shibboleth, for example, and that sort of thing. So you would come in here, you can take a look at some of our new releases, but to actually search the platform, you can just enter in full text terms, title, author, ISBN, DOI, uh, just search terms in general, and it'll bring you to here. Um, so our database search does have three different options. We have basic, where you can just put in some term or ISBN that you're looking for, or whatever it may be. We also have advanced, which it may just take a minute to load, and then expert as well. Now, the difference between basic, advanced, and expert, basic, it's usually just key terms, something you're looking for, advanced, you can enter in different fields to really specify it. And then expert, you can actually weight your search terms um, by percentage, which is really nice for researchers that are looking for specific content in like transdisciplinary areas, for example. Um, they could, if they're trying to do some research on women in STEM, for example, they might um, put STEM as like 30% of the weight of their search and um, social sciences or whatever other aspect they may be looking for as part of the other percentage. So you can really break it down. The titles will show up down here. As you can see on the right, you have filterable options. So you can look at the titles owned by your institution. You can look at our open access content. Um, you can break it down by book or journal type, even on the article and chapter level. You can include forthcoming titles or not when you're searching. You can look by copyright year as well. We have just started announcing 2023 titles, as I mentioned earlier. You can narrow it down by subject, categories that we have available, or full collections. So then let's say you're, some of these are 2023 titles, so I won't pick one of those because they aren't released yet, or at least not all of them. Let me narrow down to a 2022 title for you, and we can actually look at how the publication appears within the platform. So you can see here, you'll pull up that overall description of the book. We do have mark records available, as I noted. You can actually cite the book. There are automatic citations um, in MLA, APA, and Chicago, which is really great. Um, we're linked up to reference works and all that ref works and all that good stuff. Um, ideal for those who, at your institution who want to utilize these reference books for research. Um, the only time that your patrons would have to create an account to access, if you're accessing through IP ranges, for example, is if they want to favorite items or save searches, that sort of thing. Um, we do enable full book download. As you can see, there's PDF and HTML options for even on the individual chapter level. So here you can go into a chapter, for example, and then you have the option. You can download it in either format, 
You can look at the citation for that particular chapter, not the full book publication, and it'll give you the abstract and full text preview as well. And that's pretty much it for the librarians. If I do create a librarian administration account for you, which I can do at any time, regardless of if you participate in this agreement or not, um, you just have to reach out and let me know. You'd be able to look at your counter reports, persistent URLs for titles, mark records that you have, um, your overall institution holdings, and those would be specifically for on our platform as the various platforms that our books are hosted don't necessarily speak to each other. However, um, you can always look at what you have on our platform. You can adjust your institution settings and you can actually look at title recommendations based on what you own. We do also have user guides for our platform that we can share as well. And that can be found under res user resources and research tools. User resources, if you go to authors, you'll be able to find it. And under research tools, there's user guide. Any questions about the platform or the title share? Did that address the question that we had? Uh, yes, Katie says yes, thank you. Um, I uh, it, Please, if, you, if anyone has any other questions, please do go ahead and throw them into chat or the Q&A. Um, Brittany, uh, while we're, we're giving folks a chance to, to write any other questions they might have, um, I wanted to quickly talk to you about the like next steps in the timeline, right? So after sure. today's session, um, as I said, there'll be a follow-up email, which will include this recording. It'll also include, uh, the flyer and, and, um, uh, you know, other details. We've been sharing details, uh, in the run-up to today's meeting uh, as well. Um, but, but if folks want to participate in the free trial, they should be reaching out to uh, uh, you or me to get mm -hmm. them set up. And that trial period runs from all, all of September and October, right? Yep, through September 1st. And to be perfectly transparent, of course, if anyone comes through in the middle of that trial period, um, we do still want to wrap it up by October 31st. Um, but let's say I know how it's easy to get behind on emails and things like that and catching up with things, especially at the start of the year. So if your library comes in, if you're even looking in the last couple of weeks and you're like, oh, I do want to check out that content, I can always set up the trial as well for the librarians to at least view the content if it's a last minute thing and you aren't going to be able to get it in front of your patrons. But I do highly recommend taking advantage of the full two month period because that way you can see how your patrons are interacting with the content as well. Okay, great. Um... So then uh, the trial ends on October 31st, and then we've got like a two week period of reaching out, hearing back from uh, members about uh, what titles they might be interested in. Um, and so, but the goal then is to have kind of purchase decisions in hand by November 14th, I think, right? Yes, we have November 14th, which for everyone's consumption is a Monday. So we'll be looking at ending that trial period on the 31st, which is a Monday. And then two weeks later, the 14th, we would like to have everyone selection. So we have time to dedupe, get everything situated, everything finalized, and then um, invoices can get out to everyone. Okay, great. And then by the end of November, everyone should have access to the whole uh, collection that we've built together. Yep. All right. Great. Well, um, if anyone has any other questions that you'd like to have answered uh, live here with Brittany, please do go ahead and throw them into chat or, or raise your hand or something. Um, otherwise, I uh, unless you have anything else you'd like to cover today, Brittany, I guess we can sort of wrap up today's session and, and um, just encourage everyone to keep their uh, eyes open for uh, follow-up messaging from us about the next steps on the program. Yeah, and I'll actually go ahead and pop my email into the chat function here to everyone. Please feel free to reach out directly to me or Jeff or both of us. Happy to answer any questions you have. I can also, like I said, look, take a look at your turnaways, your current holdings that we can see so far, that sort of thing. Um, so we can always schedule even just a 15 minute call outside of this to touch base more directly. But other than that, feel free to reach out through email or give me a call. All right. Well, thank you so much, Brittany. Uh, I'm excited. Hopefully 
Um, the members are excited too. Maybe we will we'll see uh, a huge <laughs> a title share come out of this, and and it'll be something that we'll do year after year. But even if it's small, if we get some get something going, uh, I think that that there, that's something to uh, to build off of in the future too. So, thank you to yep. everyone who came today uh, to join us um, to hear from Brittany and myself. And um, we will look forward to talking to you again soon about this and other programs going forward. Definitely. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Have a nice afternoon.